in a nutshell, the um, the COVID pandemic has been a natural experiment in telling us what happens when you stop some of the very successful, apparently very successful things that we've been doing to try and improve lung cancer outcomes. And my talk started off with a, a comment to say we were actually doing okay. Things were looking good because we had actually doubled five-year survival in 15 years and expecting it to improve further. And we had CT screening programs on the horizon and lots of targeted treatment for people. We had rapid pathways to make sure people got into the system quickly before they lost their performance status. And therefore, even if they had advanced disease, they would be treated with the modern treatments and benefit from them a lot. Uh, but then COVID came along and the message went out to stay at home, uh, especially if you have a cough. Um, the GPs closed uh, their surgeries essentially to prevent cross-infection. Uh, and the whole thing really switched off all of that early diagnosis awareness, easy access and rapid diagnosis once patients got to the hospital system. And that, and that experiment has shown us that um, we see a fall in the incidence of lung cancer because people just simply don't come when they die of their lung cancer before they're even have a chance to be diagnosed. Also, we see in people with much later stage disease as a result of this, this uh, process. And for people like myself who've been in lung cancer a long time, it's a bit like working in an environment that we were used to about 20 years ago. And very sad to see people that have been waiting a long time with symptoms who've then turned up with very late stage disease and other people that have tur that turn up with, with really horrible symptoms that they've been forced to be admitted to hospital uh, with and having sat on them for some time. And what it's essential, and, and then the, and we see from an audit that there's a massive reduction in everything, really. The chest X-ray requests at the height of the first wave went down to 22% of what they would normally be. The number of uh, uh, two-week weight referrals went down uh, by 68%. Everything shut down. And as a result of that, there's been a devastating impact on lung cancer. And I wouldn't be surprised if we'd slipped back in our five-year survival for this particular cohort of patients back to the, the, what we saw 20 years ago. So the COVID pandemic has shown um, like a sort of natural experiment that if you turn off all the things that uh, make patients come along uh, as soon as possible when they get their symptoms and also suspend scre screening, although, of course, we haven't quite started screening, although the impact would have been even greater, then you get worse, terrible outcomes. So what it means is we we were doing the right things in the first place. We need to now do them again, and we need to do them even more um, energetically because it's just shown that this what happens when you turn it all off. So getting something positive from the pandemic, as far as I can see, is what we need. We can't let it pass without it being a positive outcome of this. And that positive outcome is to really redouble our efforts in getting patients to be aware of their symptoms, getting them to seek advice early, getting the primary care sector to make access to those patients easy, even in the context of a COVID pandemic, and then get the secondary care sector to see those patients really quickly and process them really quickly through our national optimal lung cancer pathway.